Well, I'll tell you what I think we should do now. If you're cool with it, Larry, why don't we go right into HAPCO? That's let, probably a good idea. Let's get started. Let's get started early because you guys got some great stuff. I want to give you a real quick my, my uh, experience with HAPCO. So if you've owned any rental properties in Philadelphia like I have, at one point I owned 22 properties in Philadelphia, you're going to have to do evictions from time to time. You're going to need some kind of advice on how to deal and navigate through the, the rules and regulations of the city of Philadelphia. HAPCO stands for the Housing Authority of Philadelphia County. And one of the things that I love about HAPCO was their attorneys. So if you need to evict somebody, one of the things they let you do is they let you evict the attorney in three segments, meaning you don't have to pay for the whole eviction up front. You can pay for just the first part, then the second part, then the third part. I don't want to get into what the parts are, right? They got an attorney, Ken Barrett. Let me tell you where this guy sits. You got the judge, then you got a railing, then you got Ken's desk, okay? He sits eight feet away from the judge, all right? If you want to have an attorney who, whose desk is located eight feet away from the judge, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty good situation for me. I think I'm going to win if, if my lawyer sits eight feet from the judge. All right, so let's get started, guys. Jim, you're up first. What do you want to talk about? Well, uh... <laughs> I wanted to give a little history on HAPCO. Um, HAPCO has been around for 70 years and it advocates for uh, property owners, investors. And uh, in an indirect way, we also advocate for tenants because we want to see tenants treated fairly. Um, HAPCO, if you guys want to see us, you can go to uh, www.hapcoassoc dot com and you can see HAPCO. Um, if you're a member you can actually go in and there's a ton of information there that can help you out as an investor. Nine, nine pages with about five articles per page. Yes and plus when you join Greg was so kind that he put together a manual it's how many pages, Greg? 76 pages. So why don't, you, front why don't we back. introduce Jim real quick so we know who he is? Because <laughs> you hear his voice in the background. <laughs> so so we have Greg Wortman. Greg, you are the VP of HAPCO, second, correct? Second vice president. Second of vice president of HAPCO. There you go. Yeah, so that way people know who you're talking to, right? All right, cool. So go ahead, go, go on, Jim. So um, basically, uh, HAPCO is an organization that looks at local legislation in the city of Philadelphia. We also advocate on a state level, and sometimes we even get involved on a federal level. Um, but basically, with the uh, COVID coming in, um, HAPCO has been extremely busy trying to represent everyone's rights uh, as, they're, as they're actually being taken away from us Absolutely. with some of the bills that are being mm -hmm. introduced. Uh, and mainly within the city, unfortunately. Um, anyway, uh, Greg, is there anything you want to say about the uh, six bills that they're introducing? So on uh, Friday, um, three members of city council, Gim, Brooks, and Gautier, uh, introduced actually seven bills. <laughs> six were aimed right at uh, landlords um, and there is actually one bill that we absolutely uh, agree with and uh, that concerns lockouts there absolutely is a uh, moratorium on lockouts that came down from the uh, state as well as from the courts and so when you say lockouts I have to ask you a question about that so you're, you're talking about like the landlord changing yeah. the locks but yeah. you can't do that anyway that's never been <laughs> legal i don't i didn't even understand how only only by court order and that's why oh, oh, lockouts I got, I got, are okay, okay I got right it. now you cannot do it there okay. are no courts. yeah and, and we kind of knew that i mean it, first of all even even the fact just that the fact that that there's no court hearings right now makes that makes that obvious anyway right and basically um we're we're disappointed to say the least that these three council members decided to hold a uh, Facebook conference two days before um, each one of them introduced two of the bills out of the six and then there also was a seventh I think they but all three of them co-sponsored and we're disappointed that we weren't at the table um, when this was all going down um, HAPCO has built has tried to build relationship with members of City Council over the last few years 
And we've been very successful with building these relationships in that when uh, bills are being introduced and or bills are being mulled that we are given at least a heads up and a little insight and sometimes we even can get some input into our position on it with these bills that didn't happen and it's very unfortunate and unfortunately the city council has stepped in to I guess the governor's shoes because the governor as is the one that can mandate things not city council and we're real disappointed of course we're not the only ones hapco as well as the apartment association are greatly affected by this so of course these the, the council doesn't have to go to you they did it they did that as a courtesy in the past yes All as right. a courtesy right. and i mean i i'll be honest i mean we we have a uh, lawyer uh, on retainer who's excellent if not one of the best and he has helped them out as well. Uh, sometimes they introduce legislation and we get to tell them, well, it's not quite legal, and but here's what you can do, and uh, we, we work together. So I, I want to bring up the, the rent strike. What's going on with the rent strike? I keep hearing, I keep hearing, you know, these people in Philadelphia, they want to do a rent strike. What is going on with that? Anybody want to chime in? Can I just finish one thing? Yeah, sure, City absolutely. Council? Uh, what we're hoping is we've developed relationships with other city council people other than the three we just mentioned. We're hoping that cooler heads will take a look at this sure. and understand that it's wrong. Right. And it's a, they're actually violating your U.S. constitutional rights, your state constitutional rights, and also the Landlord-Tenant Act. Sure. And also just contract law. Yes, contract. contract law. Law. Yeah, I mean, contract. Law, you're right. Yeah, I mean, that's right. if you have a lease and it says this and this, and then <laughs> and then people just say, "Well, your lease doesn't mean anything anymore." Well, then nothing means any, any, exactly. anything anymore. I mean, once you say once you say your lease is meaningless, well, then I also say that your law that says I can't lock somebody out is meaningless. Now, please don't do that. That wasn't that was sarcastic. I realize I just transmitted to everybody. I want you to understand. <laughs> I won't do that, and I won't teach you how to do that. And I wouldn't tell you to do that, but I use it as an example. I, I also, this is me personally, I feel that what this is, this legislation they're introducing is a big push for rent control, which is a, it's a, there are organizations around the country that are combining together to get rent control in most of your major cities. Yeah, but cities. since all these landlords are so rich, I mean, look, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> Phil and I, we're worth, what, what, what do we worth together? $200 billion? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere uh, around there. Yeah, somewhere around $200 billion. And if you take, you know, take all these landlords, I mean, you know, even the guy who retired and, and he moved out of his house and went to another house, you know, he, he retired. I mean, and he moved out of his house and he rented his house because he couldn't sell it. I mean, that guy's got to be filthy rich, right? So it can't hurt his retirement if the tenant doesn't pay the rent. Is my sarcasm coming through loud and clear? Uh, just, uh, just, just one, one, just, just take one of these bills. It's so unbelievable that, uh, they want to uh, extend your payment period for 12 months. So if, you, if, so if you have somebody that can't pay or says they can't pay and uh, they want you to work out a payment plan and they want you to work it out over 12 months, the problem with that is what happens if they don't pay at all? What happens if they just say, you know what? We'll just give you a couple dollars here and there, and they they sure. stretch it out over twelve months. At the end of twelve months, what do you have? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you that's pretty much you're going to end right, up with, right? Right. I, it, right. It, it's also a one size fits all. Some mm -hmm. some people can afford to pay. Right. Sure. Some may be able to pay eighty percent, where someone could pay fifty percent, <laughs> and that should be something that's negotiated between the landlord and the tenant. Not city council. I mean, right. we have some people who are listening in Jersey. You heard what Jersey did, right? What oh, Murphy yeah. did? Yes. Murphy said that you don't have to pay your rent this month. He Executive order, you do not have to pay your rent this month. If you're a landlord, you must use a security deposit as rent. Yes. Uh, what? So, I mean, again, you talk about breaking contract law, right? This doesn't even make any sense. I could understand it as a suggestion. And, you know, it's, if you grab it, this, this is what... I would really wish you landlords would do this. It would have been a great idea. And you could say to the tenant, okay, look, you know, your security deposit is whatever. It's, it's 1200 bucks. Give me 100 bucks extra a month, and I'll put it back into your security. That's fine. But don't mandate it. I mean, all of a sudden, now you've got people who are not going to pay their rent who can pay their rent. It's ridiculous. Well, I'll tell you, you know, the, the city's going to get their own medicine in, in the long run. Because, okay, take a guy like me. I had 22 buildings in the city of Philadelphia. 
Some of them were small apartment buildings. I got so fed up with the way they treated me that over the course of about six years, I sold off my entire portfolio and I moved all that money down to Florida where I can operate with without having a landlord license, without having a rental suitability license, without having to pay a, a fee uh, for every unit that I own every year, without having to go through lead-based paint. Now, Florida has their issues with things like if you're going to build a house brand new, you got to build it according to the hurricane zones and things like that, which makes sense. But I don't build properties. So you can operate as a landlord in Florida, at least in Sarasota, where all, where all my properties are, and nobody bothers me. See, the problem with a lot of these, uh, the rent strike and, and these bills is it hurts the smaller investors. Of course. HAPCO is made up of over 2,000 people, of which 50% own less than 10 properties. The, and the people that do own the, small, the, the smaller investors, were, are, they are the mid to lower income rental market. They, these are the people that are on the fringe. And the three, uh, the three councilmatic people are, are supposed to be for low to moderate income people, and they're sticking a stake right into the heart of the people that provide that and what's going to be left over I have no idea well as a, as a, as a matter of fact uh, some of our members have been contacting me and I was speaking to one on Friday and um, she lives in Montgomery County so she has no vote in Philadelphia but she does own one house in Mount Area that she just rehabbed and uh, she can't show it she can't rent it she can't sell it uh, she has four other properties where the tenants aren't paying and she's retired and she's a widow and she is literally taking money that she sold off on other properties prior mm -hmm. to this and using it to sustain the bills that are owed to carry her through. She's destroying her retirement fund. So the city council, these, these three ladies did not take into consideration people like her. They're, they're, they're damaging them. That's because all the landlords are rich. We just had that conversation. You know, well, guess who can fix that? Investor schooling. Investors. <laughs> Investors are going to step in and buy those properties that go to foreclosure. That's right. That go to sheriff sale that have to be done via a short sale or take over the loan subject to or something like that. I mean, look, let's face it. When times are tough, wealth transfers. And this is an opportunity where wealth is going to transfer. And I suggest if... If you want to increase the amount of money that you have in your retirement, this is a wonderful time to get involved in real estate investing. Uh, the rent strike, which, which is something that actually started on a national level, and basically what they're saying is no matter if you have a job, if you are getting unemployment, stimulus money, whatever it is, no one should be paying their rent. Interesting. Um, it's crazy. What's what's even better is it that rumor had it that uh, there might have been some councilmatic people, maybe these three individuals we've been talking about that were supposed to sign on to it. Unfortunately, or fortunately for us, uh, community legal services actually told them that it was illegal. And as everybody, I'm sure anybody knows that rent strikes are illegal in every sense of the word. Um, and that's been upheld all over the country. Uh, one of the things we we understand is that there's going to be money for unemployment, there's going to be money for stimulus, uh, and there's going to be some help there for tenants, which we, in the video that uh, was displayed on Friday, they said there's no help for tenants. There certainly is uh, in the form of unemployment stimulus, uh, $600 a week stimulus money, as well as the $1,200 stimulus check. There are individuals, though, that... Are, that are unfortunately aren't in that category and those are uh, undocumented people people who um, don't declare the money that they make and of course people who are in under garnishment uh, orders from the court and uh, they didn't pay their child support whatever those individuals I we can see they're in some trouble and but the one thing HAPCO has said right from the beginning is you we all agree that we are in this together landlords and tenants and we all of us have to work this out together we have to negotiate we come up with a plan one of the things that was hey 
take some of that money from the security. If you got two months, maybe we can use a month. Work a payment plan out, but you have got to talk. And one of the things we're finding out is there's people out there, tenants, who won't even answer the phone or communicate with their landlords. They just stop paying. Yeah, so I actually suggest that every tenant, everyone who's a tenant, talk to your landlord. If there's a problem, just talk to your landlord. And if you're a landlord, reach out to your tenant. You can reach out in a nice letter. You can reach out. I actually text messaged all my tenants uh, April, uh, I think it was April 3rd or something. Now, most of them have paid already. I actually, I actually, I guess I was fortunate. Um, the tenants I have, you know, they know me, they understand me, and they understand that they can reach out. I had two tenants reach out. One said, I just can't pay. And the other one says, can I, can I give you half? And we made, you know, we made up an agreement. And, you know, I said, look, and, and by the way, and one, one was late. And I waived the late fee, and I said, as long as you pay, pay you know, May on for May for, you know, the May's on time, you'll, you're fine. Because he said he was going back to work, or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Got another guy who owns a barber shop as a tenant. Could you imagine that guy's problems? Oh, I feel so. I mean, you know, that's a tough one. And the guy's, it's a nice unit. It's a nice unit that I'm renting for the guy. It's not like, you know, it's not, it's not a, a, sl- a you know, I don't want to call it a slumlord place. I mean, it's a beautiful place, right? And and I understand him, and he's fine. He he's he said he had some money left over, and he's going to be okay with it. But you have to reach out to your tenants, and tenants have to reach out to your landlords and have a conversation. The worst thing a landlord can do is slam their tenant right now. Absolutely. Because you can't go to court. So you might as well call them up and be nice. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not saying be a doormat. We, you know, absolutely never be a doormat. But you want to, you want to reach out and say, listen, hey, you know, I noticed some problems right now. Why don't we work something out? So tell and, me about some of the other crazy rules. Give me the craziest other thing that they've come up with. <laughs> I'm sure there's got to be something nuttier than what you've told us. Well, right now you are not allowed to evict anyone, and the courts are closed. And we know that. Uh, you know, you don't. You, we're not allowed to charge late fees or any kind of penalties. Where we get that, not a problem. But one of the bills, what they want to do is they want to, after the order is lifted, after the emergency order is lifted, whenever that might be. Uh, they want another 60-day moratorium. Sure, why not? Why not? Throw it, that's, yeah, that's, really? And here's what I'm going to tell you. This, this is what really upsets me. So let's say I started an eviction before this. Uh, they already are out two or three months rent. They want to include that as well. You know, I got a guy right now who's selling me a house, right? And one of the conditions of the sale was get, get rid of your tenant because I know she's not paying. And... Um, you know, she hasn't left, obviously. Why would she? She's not no, going. Not no, no, no. Rules, <laughs> right? And, and then you add 60 more days to it, so apparently I won't be buying this property till January or no. something, if I no. ever buy it at all. Yeah. Yeah. So there goes your, your 2% uh, sales tax on each side. Yeah, right. Uh, you can kiss that goodbye, right. city, because I can't even buy this house. I'm not going to buy a house with a tenant I can't evict. Well, how, how, how's this? How about 12 months of no rent increases after after the emergency is lifted oh, okay. so, so we already know our you. taxes I, I are going up i don't have a problem up. with that yeah so I, I mean i don't i don't want it to be mandated that there's no rent increase but i i, I just, i'm smart enough to know not to increase my rent right now well yeah no one wants to but right i mean that's just that's just a smart move is to not increase but but to have it mandated that's ridiculous mm-hmm. yeah. where if i've got a guy that's you know that's under rent and you know he, he's paying way too little it's it's silly we got a guy on hold. We got a guy on hold. I I, I didn't hear John. Okay, cool. Why don't we uh, why don't we bring that guy in? And Can I, uh, we, we got him. Hello. Is, it, is this Bob? You got it. How you guys doing? Hey Bob. Bob from South Jersey. How you doing, man? Tell us what's going on. Good. I, I'm I'm in the same boat as you. I'm a small landlord. I was working with a tenant of mine for about four years. It finally it got backed up where she owed me a lot of money. Like, we went to court. We signed an agreement where she was going to pay me some money. She didn't follow through. Oh Two weeks later, I go back to court. I get a lockout date for March the 16th, and oh the corona took place. Oh so she gets, to, she gets to live for free. So I for another two or three months probably. would like to know Longer than where I can get in line and start doing the same thing because I love it. I think that's a great idea. Just stick it to the landlords. 
Don't. <laughs> and then at the end of the year, we get to write off a lot of taxes, no income, and then we don't have to pay taxes. It's a big tax loss. Isn't that a great idea? It sounds stupid to me, doesn't it? You know, Bob, it's it's amazing that we found somebody even more sarcastic than us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's funny. Well, I mean, is it right? Let, I mean, just I, I wish the guys that wrote these laws, I wish that they had a lot of relatives that were in the same boat as us. Yeah, right. Well, we're all in the same boat. I'll tell you what. I got about 24 rentals in Florida. When they close the beaches, the bars, and the restaurants, uh, bulk of my money comes in in the month of February and March. In the month of March, okay. I had to refund about $60,000. Yeah, imagine that. Okay, I, I don't even know uh, how we're going to pay the mortgages next month if, if this keeps going. So, look, all I can tell you is this. One thing optimistic I could tell you, Bob, is losing money sometimes builds character. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully and, you have a lot of money hey, left in your equity. And I got a hell of a lot of cash. You know, you know I what? I you. got a lot of – I look at it this way. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I have a lot of great tenants that great. do the right thing. So if you have one out of 18 that's not so great, the odds aren't that bad. It could be worse. Great. Got to always look at the positive way of looking at things. Yeah, definitely. But I just think it's unreasonable – of what they're doing. I, th I think it's ridiculous. I mean, well, come on. Is. How is somebody, if they're going to release somebody uh, from paying rent, how are they going to get caught up? And even in, I don't care if they do it for three months or four months, and they build up a five, five they owe $5,000. How are, how is somebody going to catch up from $5,000? It's not going to happen. No, definitely not. You're they're going to stick it to the landlord. Money. Hey, Bob, I got a question. This is Jim from HAPCO. Okay, Jim. Um, um, my question is, how are you dealing with the fact that if, let's say if you had a problem with half of your tenants, how would you deal with it if you could not make mortgage payments, um, and all the associated costs that go along with supporting your property? I'd what, be in what trouble. What would that do to your... To your personal life, as far as your home. Oh, man, I, I would become, my, my wife would even love me less. She would like, <laughs> really, she doesn't like me now, but now, then if that was to happen, she would say, gosh, I, why didn't this happen 25 years ago? And then I could have got rid of you then. <laughs> That's hey, Bob, what we're hoop, I mean, awesome. come on. Yeah. Hey, All Bob, right. I got some He'll medicine. He'll be on next week. <laughs> okay. so, Bob, I got some medicine for you. I want you to go pour okay. yourself a stiff uh, glass of scotch or something hard like that and relax. Maybe, you know? maybe, maybe a half a bottle, right? And start drinking yeah, really. it and then wake up when this is all over. Yeah, I hope things work out for you uh, because, you know, uh, this can't continue for long. If it does, then ah. then financial Armageddon is coming. <laughs> Great talking to you. Thanks for calling our show. We hope you call next time. You know, I just right, want to say, good. take Bye. care. Bob Bob brought up yeah. something really important, and, and that's a ninety nine point nine percent of my tenants are wonderful. I mean, and and all all, all my friends who own rental units, we all have great stories about uh, how wonderful tenants can be. I mean, I had a. I had my tenants down right before this for a big get together where I cooked for them, and everybody gets to know everybody. It's just it's really nice, uh, but there are stinkers out there, sure. and that's that's who makes life really difficult. And it, and just like Jim was saying, it's a percentage game, and uh, we're basically working off of about a 50, 15 percent margin. Uh, Eighty five percent usually goes towards mortgage payments and other things. So 15% is not a whole lot to work with. You know, uh, it's funny. The city is making more anti-landlord laws. I've always been trying to... I'm not doing anything to try to get them, but I've always been complaining about it my whole career. I bought my first house in Philadelphia in 1989, so I've been a landlord in Philly for 31 years. One time I'm on a plane... I'm sitting next to this guy. Hey, what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? The guy's a brain surgeon, right? I said, let me ask you a question. I said, how many licenses does a brain surgeon in Philadelphia need? He says, I don't really understand the question, Phil. 
He says, why would you ever need more than one license? And I said, well, let me tell you about <laughs> landlords, okay? We need a business privilege license. We need a rental suitability license, and we need a landlord license for every unit we owe, own we have to pay every year. I said, I've got three licenses. You operate on people's brains, and you only need one, okay? How about that logic? <laughs> really? Yeah. Right. I, I will say this. If, if you... If you own property in Philadelphia and you are a landlord, you absolutely should belong to our organization. Uh, it's $125 a year is all it is. We have a eviction service. Oh, and it's tax deductible too. It's tax deductible. <laughs> we have an eviction service. We have a forum. If you have, want questions, you go on the forum. Hey, I need a plumber in West Philadelphia. Hey, I need a locksmith in North Philadelphia. Uh, we have a monthly newsletter that goes out. Uh, we have three educational events every month that you can attend. Uh, we have a lot going on. We, and our biggest thing is, is we want landlords to follow the rules. We know the rules. We have a book about it. Everybody gets that. But we want landlords to follow the rules, and that's where HATCO is at its finest. We are an organization that believes the rules are made. Okay, some of them we don't like. We got to follow them and we make sure that our people know where do you go if you're a landlord in Philadelphia to know what all the rules are. So Good investors, luck with that one. Yeah, so at Investor Schooling, <laughs> we're a big advocate of HAPCO. What's the website again for them to go to join? It's H-A-P-C-O-A-S-S-O-C.com. All right, cool. I'm actually going to post it on Facebook for those guys right now. They can go there too. Excellent. All right. Uh, oh, are we going to a commercial? We can. All right. All right. So, John, why don't you take us out to commercial, and we'll be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from investorschooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to Investorschooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to Investorschooling.com. RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executex Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executex Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Back. Welcome back, everybody, to Investor Schooling Live. So we are here. We are here in our Langhorn headquarters. And if you guys want to call in, we got a few more minutes to show, 855-939-1137. But more importantly, if you want to find out how to protect yourself and how to help yourself in anything that has to do with real estate investing and or stock options trading, go to InvestorSchooling.com and register for this Thursday's class. We're both live and online class right now. So if you guys don't want to come in, that's okay. And if you want to come in, we're, we are we are 
saying that you can definitely come in. Uh, you can practice any kind of social distancing you want while you're here. However, we you can also be online. So that's www.investorschooling. Did I leave that one of the W's again, Phil? Investorschooling.com. And you can register. The w's. Just, just leave the www's out. I haven't used that in 25 years. Well, I, did they have the internet in 25 years? Do you ago? have a fax machine, Larry? Can I do. I fax you something? Yes, you can. Because that technology was invented in the 1960s. You should and, probably and, get rid of it. And my phone still rings, like you know, one of those, uh, you know, one of those old-fashioned. <laughs> anyway, anyway, getting back to here we are. So, so real quick, I want, I, want to, I want to grab you guys real quick before you guys leave and before we're, we're done. So, tell us a little bit about you know some of the things that landlords need to know about investing in Philadelphia. So why don't you start, Jim? Tell us a little bit about the, the you know, what, you what know, can happen to you. Some of it's obvious. When you buy something and you're starting a business in Philadelphia, you have to register. Um, you have to register business. your business, right? Right, Okay. yes. And um, once you've done that and you have your business license, um, they call it a commercial activity license. It's free. But once you sign up, you're on the radar. And um, at that point, you can now apply for a rental license. If you don't have that, you can't get your rental license. Once you have your rental license and you go to rent to someone, you need to have a rental suitability certificate that's current. So what does a rental suitability certificate mean? <laughs> it just means that you're certifying that the house meets HQS standards, housing quality standards. Gotcha. And that it's safe for the tenant and you're, you know, you're certifying that it is. Um, so when, once you've done that, uh, in your lease, if you just go to Staples and buy a lease, you just cost yourself thousands and thousands of dollars Absolutely. when the eviction happens. So you need to have a proper lease. Um, and I would suggest you go to a good real estate attorney, have that lease, you know, have them drafted up and make sure that attorney knows what's going on in Philadelphia. Because in the lease, you have to have certain um, clauses and different things related to lead paint. Uh, you also have federal requirements. So, I'm gonna, so, so on the sake of time, I want to talk to you a little, a little bit about the lead paint situation. So we've had people who have come to our school who have, have had lead paint problems, and they've gotten burned. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and uh, why don't you tell us what happens if you don't have a lead paint test? Okay, if you don't have a lead paint test and you get to court and, you, and the, the judge looks for all this, the, the test and the certification. So you go into court basically because you want to evict you your tenant. They haven't, the paid, they haven't they paid, paid anything. Paid. Right, you go to court. So you're now in court. The judge looks over everything, and he turns around and he says, well, I understand that they didn't pay your rent, this, that, and the other. However, you didn't have these forms. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You have to give all the money back from the inception of the lease. So the, all the money back. So if, they, the if, they paid, back. if they've been there for three years... Yes. You now have to pay them back three years' rent. Now, you just saying that is enough to keep me from buying anything in Philadelphia. Yeah, when you go into court, you better have a lease, the rent a suitability yep. license, and soon, soon to be, a, uh, a, a lead paint cert. Now, right now, currently, the law is in Philly, if you rent the children six and under, you have to have it done. We know right. that. Unfortunately, that's going to change. Whereby, are you ready for this, gentlemen? It doesn't matter if I rent to my grandmother who's 96 years old. I have to do a lead paint test. So I got to tell you something. For I, I'm actually all for that. And here's, here's the reason I'm all for it. I'm all for it for everyone. I'm not all for the lead paint test. I'm all for it for everyone because th you now have a couple that moves into your, into your house and they have a child and they don't tell you and then all of a sudden you now have to go to court to evict them and they say, oh, I have a child under six and I, and I didn't tell the landlord and guess what? They never did a, landlord, a, a, te a paint test. Good, so, good, good point, Larry, but here's the problem. That's just, for, that's just for rental units. What about the people that are in private homes? Oh, okay. <laughs> don't they have kids? Uh, they, absolutely. But well, I, they're not but, required. But you, you missed my point. I don't agree that we should have a lead point lead yeah. paint test i agree that it should be a lead paint test for everyone not just for people because once once you do that now you start to confuse the pot so mm -hmm. guys i'm like so excited you guys are here i want to thank you both for coming thank you uh